and yes, welcome to episode nine with Georgie's Gun Dogs at Trails for Tales Dog Training. Welcome. Uh, hello again to new subscribers and some people have been getting in contact regarding asking a couple of questions uh, with training, which has been really good. So thank you. Like I said, you're always welcome to ask me questions. Um, and again, thank you and welcome to new subscribers. I'm glad you're, uh, again, somebody said they're really enjoying the videos. So I really appreciate that massively. Thank you. Because you just never know what, what people might think or whether they'll like it. So really appreciate it. You are starting to become quite enjoying sitting in here. He's starting to enjoy the camera, I think, as well. Because he's always with me now when I'm filming. So in this episode, which is episode nine is it nine or ten god i forgot doesn't matter i will know when i put it up anyway so in this episode we're going to talk about introduction to heel work oh oh i can hear the groans as they go so heel work yes it is notorious be a bit of pain in the backside to teach it is hard work now, some dogs are more natural at it. Some dogs are more challenging. There is a variety of reasons which you're going to chat about and go through. Um, but why do we use it? Why is it important? Well, for me in Gundog, it's important because it's a form of steadiness. It's a form of control. It's a form of the dog being around you, knowing where they are, especially as well if you're, you know, lining up for things, walking between drives on and off lead or sometimes needing to be so if i'm beating sometimes i can't always have the we might have to go slow and the keeper just wants to trickle down i want the dog to be able to walk at the side of me happily and not be hunting but listening by my heel yes yeah you're not bad are you right so and again it's like with the retrievers it depends what you're doing and shooting as well but heel work it's that element of control that dog learning to be by your side listening and like if you again like i said if you're going to be doing anything retriever work you know the dog always needs to be looking forward and ready, for, especially if you were doing walk up or anything, they have to walk up along your heel, be ready to be ready if there's a retrieves are going out or whatever's happening in front, they're ready, locked on and focused, all right? But heel work again is important in day to day life. You don't want to, let's face it, you don't want a dog dragging your arm off anyway. And when we're in these centered environments, it's quite common that, you know, dogs do want to pull a bit more. There's a lot. <laughs> A lot of challenges. You're a big baby, aren't you? There's a lot of challenges. So, why is heel work challenging? Well, there's a number of reasons why. So, you'll get some breeds that are more easier to train than the others, but there's so many factors. Again, with anything, when you're training, you have to take in consideration. Okay. So, let's go a bit a little about the breed. So, some breeds are likely to pull a bit more than others. Now, I'm not blanketing this across all the breeds because yes, we're going to be shouting. Oh well, I've got you know. I know, and I will go over that. So like Spaniels are notorious for are not the most easiest to train on heel work because at the end of the day, they like to put their nose down. They like to zigzag, it's their genetics, right? You know, they're, they're, we bred them to hunt. So their nose is on the ground a lot, searching things out, you, smelling the scent, going for it. So they have a natural head down. So for them, it is challenging. Also, I find because they're a busy little breed, that walking at that pace with you is really hard so you've got to take this in consideration when training it so then you also get your larger breed so then that's the more the powerful the powerful ones so again your pointers your hprs your setters stuff like that the labradors they're big dogs you know and you do need to get it in early foundations heel work because these dogs, once they start learning the pulling and it gets them to places, it becomes hard work. They're strong dogs. And we also have to take in consideration what are they feeling in that space? Because sometimes, you know, it's not always easy to train in certain environments. Again, we will talk over the layers. Again, and then you have your retrievers. Now, I do find some retrievers are a lot more quicker and responsive on the heel work than, let's say, some of the other breeds. I'm not saying that is blanket all over because I know there are some that aren't. So don't think I'm literally giving one stick for one because, like I always say in all my videos, every dog that comes in front of me, you have to treat as an individual. Yes, there will be breed characteristics or certain things, but we have to treat as an individual because I don't know the dog's history unless it's come from a puppy. All right. So with anything with heel work, 
When I, okay, let's start at the beginning. So when I first teach a dog heel work, I first have to get to know the dog. Now, if it's a puppy, I can work on this straight off. Now, I like to do a lot of off lead training first. What I don't do, and I tell this to all my clients is, I don't ask for heel work only to a walk. Because what happens, the anticipation of that walk, where a lot of, a lot of people let the dogs off, the anticipation of knowing where they're going, the same routine, it's so great that a lot of these dogs learn to pull. They're only pulling to get there faster and then they get, when they pull, at the end of it, they get rewarded with a massive run around the field or run around a pile, run around woods, whatever, million reasons, right? So for me, when I'm first training, like let's say a puppy, I don't do it on walks. I'm doing it maybe with the breakfast, the lunch, a little bit with the dinner. I'll be taking them out a little different spots, different areas, you know, up and up and down the garden. Then I might go out up and down the back lane. You know, the stuff like this that I build up. And I also want to teach the lead doesn't mean you're going for a walk. Because so many dogs that learn that, they are a nightmare the minute they start the house. Yes, you can, you can teach them to be calm before the lead comes out, off of behaviours like off the sit before the lead's put on and stuff like that. Absolutely. But this is about lead work. And if you only ever bring that lead out for a walk, it's going to be hard work from the beginning. Because all they know is they lose the plot the minute they see that lead and then it starts. Then you're battling this, what we call arousal, so overexcitement you know over height you're starting to battle that and then you're all of a sudden going you're going to heal with me when you haven't put any other areas where they're actually not thinking they're going anywhere or a particular place so for him i have in the early stages because obviously i don't walk him like the average pet dog is walked over because he comes to work with me and does a lot of training all the time i've never needed to so when we've done le put him on the lead he doesn't think in particular he's going to i'll tell you what though the only thing he gets hyped on is if i put the harness on is when i do the normal bumble walk with him is when his arousal goes through because he knows he's going to be running around with the others in the house right that's the only time but that is because that's his day off i'm giving him a day off but the rest of the time when i put his normal lead on that he knows that it's training he's likely to go with me somewhere he just bump he's a lot more calmer when he goes out and he bumbles so it's you've got to think how you're setting it up i like to set it up i like to play a lot of games with heel work. so like i said with puppies i've got an opportunity of a dog that's going to cling at my heel so i'm going to use it like i said i do a lot of off lead training heel work first before I put the lead on. And the reason being is it's easier to transfer. Once you've nailed the position, it's easier to transfer than putting the lead on because if they've learned that cue, so my cue for the heel work is my left leg to where the dog is. So the dog on that side is on my left. When I lead off on that or I say heel, they know to walk at my heel, but I built value in that cue. So when I do transfer to putting a lead on, it's a lot easier than me trying to do it with the lead plus off lead in a place let's say there's a little bit of a channel or you've got a wall next to you or anything like that you have a better chance of building that value there also that positioning learning the position learning your cue of what heel work means before then i have to you know i'm being off lead i have that freedom and i don't do it in a big open wide field that's just stupid you, you know you haven't got a chance I take it, so I might just do it in the kitchen first, a little puppy next to the kitchen side. Yeah, just working on that position. Sometimes I don't even step forward with the dog when I'm first teaching it. So I'm just building value at the side of me. All right, so I like to do the off lead. It's easy, freedom. You haven't got to think about the lead, so I can build value in that. And like I said, I have a lot of games with heel. Heel work should be fun. You're not going to get it in an hour, all right? Yes, there are other methods that might do that, but I'm not personally comfortable, each to their own, but I'm not personally comfortable in doing their methods. I like my to drive my dog into me. I like my dog want to be there because they've had fun there. It's valuable. Oh, I'm going to listen, something happens there. You know, when I walk here, good things happen. Also, though, I also teach them if you pull, you're not getting to where you want to go. Yeah? So all this is has to take into place so let's talk a little bit about emotion and stuff in heel work so there's going to be some dogs out there that we have to take through so if you're working on heel work in a later stage in dogs let's say an adolescent male 
some of them are just not going to be able to focus you'll be saying well, i've heard people say you know the marking everywhere they're doing this to pull enough right thing the, the thing is probably because there's not been a lot dealt with it as a poppy once you hit adolescence and then start because it becomes more of a problem because the confidence grows and also their hormones are kicking in so they're being challenged you know you're asking a really challenging time for that dog to learn now, i'm not saying that's not possible because it is and it depends again on the dog but these are things you have to take in consideration you'd have to really strip that dog back you can't expect it like i said go to a walk go up the road do the walk and be able to cope when previous history they've got to a to b pulling left right and center you have to take that in consideration when you're teaching the start your leader you got to take your history in consideration hence why i always say start an environment that is easy not distracting that's why i say to people don't practice to walk so what i say to a lot of my clients who are wanting to work on it i say the walk that you want to do on your free time drive them to it the lead work make it separate so the lead become it doesn't mean anything yeah so you'll do a little bit of lead work and then maybe later in the day you might drive them to the walk you can let them off in the walk so you can separate it then bring it back together so that when your walk your lead work is walking in other areas you can start to then introduce a walk into it i even had one client she drove further, further started at the walk and then she'd go further further back because she was bringing it together eventually she could walk from a house to a thing but she built it up because you've also got to think leader it's hard work when they're not when they've not learned it it's a lot of focus it, it you're they're battling things they want to do now i'm not saying dogs can't sniff because it's also that is important i personally put it on cue especially if i'm working on lead work and i think oh because i had a dog barry wasn't very foody so to get his heel work i use the environment i'd say right if you walk so many paces i'll give you a sniff so i'd say go sniff that was his rub market go sniff and then we drive it there on and off lead on and off lead there were other times and other games he loved to do heel work with but at the time when the environments were getting harder i worked out that's what he wanted i've even done a little bit with sid because even though this one's massively foodie sometimes the heel work can be a real challenge for them so when he's there and there's a lot of scent going on i'm like right well if you do a b and c with me i'll give you a bit of a sniff and then you're also you're not taking away from that sniff but you're using that as a reward but you're also a little bit more in control in the environment but i used to drive in society because he knew it was coming even hunting and stuff right another thing to take into consideration is dogs emotions now there are some dogs out there which i would say probably need to see a behaviorist over a gun dog trainer but there are some dogs there where everything the world is just too much and when they're in that headspace they can't learn yeah they just can't function because they are in a mode where the world everything noise oh god that's happening that's happening and then we're trying to offer them something to say look focus on me it's too much you probably need to go and see a behaviorist for that so that you have to take this in consideration i'm not saying they can't work through it and there are training tools to support them but you have to also consider if that dog would be suitable for a b and c anyway so like I said, with heel work, it is hard work. I personally love training it. I absolutely love it because it challenges me, because every dog is different and it is hard work and you have to put it in. Like I said, I do majority more off so I find it easy to transfer the lead, but I just love it and I have a lot of games for it. But in this video, all we're doing is introducing them to the position, building value in the position. Because for me, to get these dogs to walk off side by this, we've got to have a lot of value in it. We've really got to proof it. We've really got to be consistent. Because with lead work and ear work, you have to be mighty consistent. Because if you're not clear criteria to that dog for heel work and consistent with everywhere you go with it, you will have a battle yeah i know because but also you have to take feedback of the environment so there's certain areas that he is harder working that i know i need to work on them areas but then there's a young dog so we're still working on that other areas he's fabulous some are go right that needs work i know what it is all oh, coming here that's except all oh, this ground senti so i have to get him and break it down to him but what i do is i make sure i get them place i don't take him too far to work on that lead work so where it pushes him over the edge 
and then it just becomes not enjoyable because that's another thing you don't want it to be not enjoyable but leader at this point like i was playing with him this morning driving him onto toys if you go my old position i throw him out like a blind throw it out behind me be off somewhere go in different roads around my field and then i just scoot him and drive him back so one help him with me blinds but two he was driving in the side of me plus offering other behaviours to get to that. But guess what? I've been fun learning that position. These are videos, obviously I'll do later down the line when we're more pushing on the heel work. Today's about the introduction. So you, you have to be patient with heel work. You have to really build the layers in. But my God, when you get it, there's nothing like a dog walking. I never forget my old boy Barry. Last day I ever shot with him, it was one of my probably biggest highlights. I'd really got some with him. That's why it was so sad for what happened. But I could literally, I did the whole shoe with him off lead. And he didn't leave my side unless I asked him to hunt. He was just fabulous. And I put hours and hours. Because I tell you what, he was a nightmare. Do you want some water? Siddy. He was an absolute nightmare. Right? Are you all right? He was an absolute nightmare when he first got, he would, because he was so driven in the environment. I, and I really have to work on him, like I said, because there's some dogs, they can't, take, they can't focus on the food. I'm not saying all, because there will be some that you can use food in the training to support it. There'll be some that would toy motivate. Like I said, some people, we've just got to find, and that's why I've got quite a few different ranges of ways we can teach and heal work and have fun with it. That's the main thing with anything with training is fun. So what you'll see in this video is I'm just going to do a little clip of how I start it with a young dog. Uh, nice setup. Um, and all this is about learning position and a couple of steps. This is not going to solve your problem of your pulling dog right right now. That's not what this video is. This is the start so you can start getting foundations in and understand what you're looking for. Like I said with Hilwood, you have to be patient. It does not happen in our... I would say heel work for a real good heel work is one of the most hardest things out of anything in the gun dog to train that dog. Yeah, it is because it's consistency, it's positioning, it's where they want you, then all the factors of everything going around it. So the area, the environment's getting more stimulated, things going on, things happening, because you've got to be able to do it around distractions, being by your heel, then locking on for things, moving around, turns at your heel, because we have to use them to turn, because there might be times we need to on the trees and stuff, whatever, yeah, million reasons. So you really have to take in consideration all these factors. Like I said at the beginning with your learning, start simple, yeah, don't literally run before you can walk. Start simple, start easy, figure your dog out, what they like, what you can play with for your heel work. And like I said, I will put different videos up of it along the along the months, okay? I'm just, this is, at the moment, we're at the stage with the videos where we're just introducing the dogs to new, to the, to the, to the real basics. And then I'll start bringing in the more advanced stuff the more intermediate stuff the more stuff right we can push that on right we can progress that we can progress it but this is for now so yeah enjoy all your heel work be you know if you're never in the mood anyway and i always say especially with heel work if you're not in the mood for training don't train because you will have fallout with your wonderful dog and that is not what you want from training because your dog will pick up on it and then the pressure and then all sorts will transpire Again, take everything in consideration with that dog. Also, another one, be aware that they're fighting fit. They're uncomfortable and lead work is painful in whatever reason. They're not going to be happy to do it. And then it be, just becomes punishing, which we don't want in training. We want them to enjoy it, drive for us. Like, oh, because I want that. I want, he comes to me in the morning. All I want from him is looking at me like, come on. Whatever you're doing, it's bloody your work. Or sit stay I want to do it because I want to draw I want that drive I want I want them to like love working with me yeah even with you work yeah I want to be there because actually good things happen don't get me wrong they all find it challenging and certain breeds more than other but we've got to make it so that they feel like they can accomplish it they understand it so what you'll see in the next video after my long conversations is a little clip of how i introduce it i hope you enjoy it i hope you enjoy this video if you have any questions regarding heel work please get in touch 
I think I've covered most of the basis of it. Um, like I said, break it down, have fun. All right, so thank you very much for joining me with this episode. Enjoy the next clip. Enjoy the clip that's going to follow the start of your heel work. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you at the next episode. Bye. So, in this video, you are going to learn the introduction to the heel position. You get a freebie. So, as you, we spoke about in the video before, it's not always the easiest, but I like to do it off lead first. When I first introduce it to a young dog or any dog first, I like to do it off lead. Because the reason being is, I feel like I've got better flow, I don't have to faff about with the lead at the moment, because that's all mechanics in itself. I can just work with a dog off lead in an area that I know is not too distracting. And I can work with that young puppy or young dog or any dog that first I just want to build value here at the side of me. All right. Now, you can also use your board for this, for positioning, but we're going to start first just introducing the position. So a majority of dogs, when you train them first, a lot of the training we do, for the majority of a dog, whatever you're teaching, even with a young puppy, we do a lot of the front. So a lot of the time they do find it hard to come to the side because they're so used to being at the front. I'm glad you're there, good boy, because you've shown a good example. So. In this instance then, I like to use things like walls, fences, hedge lines, stuff like this, okay? In the kitchen, up against sides, up against walls, hallways, anywhere where I can keep them contained. You can see them in a channel as well here. So what people don't realise, a lot of that is a barrier to a dog. So I like channels when I'm first training because I can keep them straight by the side of me. Alright, as you can see we've taught a little bit, right? But you can see that means to you, which I'm talking about, is I've built value at the side of me with Sid. He knows he had a lot of reinforcement history there. So what I want to do first is in this is introduce the position. I'm not asking for 5 million miles. I'm asking just for position and building value in it. I'm going to use food in this video. Like I said, I'll be doing other heel work videos because I've got so many because I just love training it and you can have a lot of fun with it. This video is all about the position, yeah? I will show you how we take off on a few steps and fade out the food and talk about stuff like that. Because when teaching heel work, at the beginning, I pay a lot of whatever that dog is motivated by, motivated by. But for every little step, then I slowly fade down asking for more steps between payment and I get more and more and more and more less payment. So don't think you're going to be there like a dispenser with whatever all the time. This is the early beginning foundation stages. Yep. Yeah? I'm just teaching the position. I'm building value in the position, which is my side. I'm teaching the cue, which my cue is this leg means heel, this leg means sit, stay. Okay. So every time I take off that or my cue is heel, you can have whatever you want from bananas, close, I don't care. My main one is the side of me here, yeah? So I'm teaching that value to that dog at the side of me. Be here, like he is, good lad. Yep. Yeah. I mean, obviously we do a lot of sit stays here and sit everything there, but because I've done so much from there, he's happy to be there. So let's get cracking and let's get teaching it. So imagine the dog is at the front. Right, so you have the dog, majority of dogs will be sat here at the front. What I first will do is I will present some food. I have food in my hand, but this is a reminder now. This is, I don't rely on this later down the line. My food will not always be in my hand because if the food is always in your hand, they learn to follow the food, not the position. Okay, you've seen before, when I just had my hand up, he moved in position, right? This is the early stages. This will all be faded. You should be able to eventually walk with no food in your hand because the dog has learnt the position and learnt your cue, all right? So I have some food in my hands. I have a little bit of a handful of it. And the reason being is when he is in position, I'm gonna pay a few times there, not just the once. I am really heavily saying to him, that's where I want you, okay? So I have the food. I'm gonna take a step back with this leg. I'm going to bring Sid round. My feet are going to join together and I'm going to pace in the position. Yes. 
and I mark him for being in the position. Also, where was my food? It was on the side of the dog, because if you have food on the other side, what will happen is the dog will come across, yep, which we don't want, good lad. We want it here. So my food is at the side where I know I'm going to reward the dog, whether that left or right. So all my food is on my left, yep. So I can happily go in my pocket to the left, and not there because if I went there he'll come across so the, currently all I'm doing is a position good lad good lad so I might just say right a young puppy good finish so I could have done that with the meal time good lad good boy yeah I break off and I'll reset up again okay if that was a young dog that's all I might ask for in that first couple of sessions just that position so they start swinging into it yeah so here we go again yes good lad good lad good that and look I'm paying that value for being there so he's not rushing off if you learn one some dogs will go off right good boy good lad so imagine you've learnt that, they might even know with your hand with no food in, there, yeah? Well I've built value in that position, he knows that position. Okay, so imagine we want to do a little few steps off. All I will do is I'll still have the food in my hand at this early stage, like I will repeat again, it's the early stage, this is not forever, right? I've got the food there, I might take off, yes. Marking on that foot, set up again. Go back, bang, pay. Yes, good lad. Pay again there. I've not even took two steps, yeah? I'm just building the back. If you have a dog that is snatchy and stuff like that, you need to consider have you fed it? Is it stressed? Is the environment too much? Also, you can drop food to the floor or you can get and teach them to catch it read what your dog is doing okay don't you know there's something else going on there okay so dog's in that position right let's take a couple of more steps yes good lad good boy so i keep getting him to follow me a bit more good boy and i'm paying again even for being there Yes, good boy. What did he? So as you can see, he's already, you can see, yes, he has practiced, well practiced on this, but he's going in the moment, he's like, I need to be at the side. It's valuable, okay? Okay, so now we are, let's say we want to fade a little bit of food out and do a bit more. You would set up again, pay the dog. This time you might have your hands in your pocket. Yes. Yeah, so I marked him for being with me. And when I pay him, I stand still. Okay, so they sit down, they relax. Because if I sometimes pay on the move, sometimes dogs can disengage quite quickly if you pay on the move. Like, oh, treat, God. But I can stop, I can reset the heel work. Yep. Good lad. Yes, good boy. All I'm showing you is early snippets. That's all I would look for with a young dog. Again, you can use the place board. If you start getting value on the place board, it's a good place to start this, yeah? Because they're in position, you can build value in it, you can set them off, yeah? But, like I said with all the stage at first, I'm gonna pay heavily. You probably will food, follow food for a bit, but then I'll say, right, put my food in my pocket, keep my hands in my pocket. Then I'll fade my hands out, yeah? So. And then I'm asking, but I'm always starting that new picture from the beginning. So it's like, right, I move from food in hand, then to food, to pocket. Then I put my hands out and I can even put the cue word on with the leg. Because every time they're seeing that leg come off, they're learning. Come with you. Heel. Yes, good lad. And that's what I do. Mark them straight away and pay them. Then do the next stage and the next stage. But like I said, this early start of your heel work this is the foundations yeah but imagine you put the lead on lead on heel yes 
good lad. Yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to take off with that lead. And you can see again, food still there. Lead there when you're usually doing it with the lead on. Heel. Yes, good boy. That's all I do. All right. Boy, city. Lead off. So this is just the introduction clip for your thing. Don't think this is going to solve you pulling and everything straight off. You have to break it back down, strip it back with that dog. Nice new environment, nice quiet environment. Use the walls so they can't fling out. Use the place board to start them off. Break the stages down first food, then pocket, then fade out so your hands are nice and relaxed by the dog. The dog will just walk with you. He'll Yeah, good lad. Yeah, so it ends up looking like that. Yeah, but this is one way. We have got other ways that will come later down the line. But for now, just get them on. But sometimes don't move from there. The dog will just, if the dog's just struggling with that, work on that before the next day. Like I said, always read your dog. Okay, so that is the introduction to the heel position. Thank you. Bye! Good boy.